were several quarry workings alongside the River Tyvee at Kilgarran, which provided employment for men in the area. But the work was hard and dangerous. They often worked high up on ledges, with obvious dangers to themselves and those below them. But it was not only the higher levels that were worked. Stone was also extracted from pits, and on Saturday the 26th of November, 1898, around 11 o'clock in the morning, a dreadful accident occurred in number one pit, Keffen Quarry, Kilgarran. A sudden fall of rock from a higher level occurred when a group of quarrymen were working beneath it. Two huge blocks of stone, one over two tons in weight, fell into the pit. Three of the workers managed to climb out, but two remained. Thomas Watts and Thomas Lloyd were trapped under the stones. Worse still, water from the Tybee was flooding the pit. There was the possibility that any rescuers might be hit by another fall of rock. No one from the quarry was willing to take the risk of trying to free the men. Word of the accident spread and John Watts, brother of one of the trapped men, was not going to leave his brother to die. He got help and using a steam crane, chains and bars, the stone was lifted from the trapped men. For which act, one of the rescuers, William Davis, was later recommended to be given a medal for bravery by the Royal Humane Society. The courage of the rescuers saved Thomas Watts from certain death. The water had reached his chin any longer and he would have drowned. Thomas Lloyd was also brought out but he had been dead from the moment the rock fell. It had hit him on the head and broken his neck. Both Thomas Watts and Thomas Lloyd lived on Kamai Street in Kilgarran and both were married men. Watts had a dislocated shoulder and was entitled to nine shillings a week in compensation for his injuries whilst he was unable to work. Thomas Lloyd's widow received £150 in compensation for his death but it was five months before she received it. Thomas was a member of T. Rose Independent Chapel. A prayer meeting was organised at his widow's house where his body was lying awaiting burial on the Monday evening following his death. Unfortunately, this was also the time and place of the inquest and the coroner and jury arrived and found the meeting in full force. With an astonishing lack of tact, the coroner would not wait and demanded entrance. A standoff between the minister and the coroner eventually resulted in victory for the coroner, but the reverend gentleman was exceedingly wroth and many times declared that the coroner should hear of the matter again. Thomas Lloyd's body was buried at T. Rose Chapel Yard, but since then the gravestones have been uprooted from their original positions and recited. Unfortunately, Thomas's has been broken. The top of the monument remains and tells us that it is in loving memory of Thomas Lloyd, taken away by an accident at Kevin Quarry Kilgarran, November the 26th, 1898, in the 53rd year of his age. Roses symbolising love and mourning, and primroses symbolising his widow's feeling of being bereft at his loss, are carved above male and female clasped hands, and the Welsh words meaning we'll meet again. In the arch of the stone is a banner with the words of Proverbs 27 1 in Welsh, which in English is, Boast not thyself for tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Another quarry death was equally unexpected, but this time it was not of a quarryman. Mrs Elizabeth Richards, the 64-year-old wife of Samuel Richards of Glogue Mill, was on November the 30th, 1890, quietly going about her daily life. She had visited a friend and was going on to Llewyn Ruth Chapel by a path which was close to a nearby quarry. It was dark and she somehow lost the path she must have taken many times and fell 80 feet down the quarry face. This unfortunate lady was not found for another four hours but she was by that time, if not long before, quite dead. She is buried at the chapel she was making for, sadly arriving there at last in a coffin, rather than on foot. Thanks for joining me, and stay safe.